And then we're gonna... So the reason I want to talk about this one is, is that It's like they know. It's like they know I'm coming for them. So I... Okay. We'll just wait. I'm gonna... I'm gonna wait inside. I really am a bit over all the lawn mowing. <laughs> ah, the sound! Constant. So over the last couple years, Ben and I have really been on a journey to transform our yard into something other than just lawn. And I think a lot of people, especially up here in Florida, I don't know about for other states, but I feel like a lot of people in Florida are just really trying to move away from traditional grass lawns. And so I wanted to talk you guys through some of my thought process on one, how we're transforming our yard and the things that we're thinking about doing in the future like lawn alternative plants, basically like ground covers that you can walk on or ground covers just to cover up areas or just like, what are we trying to do with our lawn overall? And hopefully that'll help you as you think about what do you want to do with your lawn in the future? Do you want to keep it one big grassy thing or do you want to do something different? You know, this isn't doing anything for wildlife. Bees aren't using it, birds aren't using it, <laughs> butterflies aren't using it. It's generally this type of grass that most of us have. It's just, it's, it's a dead zone. So while there is grass and it's alive, it's just not doing anything. So here in Florida, I think a lot of us are just like, we're over it. And as much as I love all the sound pollution from everybody getting their lawn mode, I know I'm included. I'm in this journey and my husband are in this journey of like, let's, let's have less or none. That's eventual, that's like our long-term goal is none. But here's the thing. When you think about lawn alternatives, a lot of people start with like clover. That's like really big right now. I've been seeing like a ton of TikToks right now all about like put clover in. But let's take a step back before we even get into clover because one of the first things that you can do as a lawn alternative is not have like a ground cover lawn. Just like put in totally different types of gardens. Like put in a vegetable garden put in a wildflower garden. Like you don't have to just like replace with another flat green blanket or just a blanket of plants. While they can be really pretty, like you have other alternatives. So like the first thing just to think about, and that's what we basically did. Like this all was grass when we moved in and now it's vegetables. And back there, well, some of that was grass. Some of it was like a bunch of boring hedges. So you can see like this huge area back here and the vast majority of our front yard are completely empty of grass except for this one last lonely strip. So that's the first thing that like for us as we think about our yard and how we're going to do lawn alternatives, the first thing we're doing is just reducing how much lawn we're going to have. But the next thing is, is we do want some areas like the kiddos do like to run around. Um, my dogs don't, they're old. They really don't do a lot. They kind of meander and like sitting on the sidewalks and they really aren't big fans of grass. Nothing really to do with grass. It's not an ecosystem judgment thing. It's just more of they were stuck in cages the first few years of their life by a hoarder. So they just never learned to like grass. Or it's because they're big supporters of native plants. You choose which story you want to go with, but that's my dogs are no grass kind of dogs. So there's a couple of different ground covers that I've been looking at over the last two years to come in and supplement some of the areas. Because one of the things that I really do want to get away from having to do so much of it every year is laying down a ton of mulch. It takes a lot of time and I'm always doing it in the hottest part of the year because I like pain, I guess. I'm not sure. So I needed some ground covers that I can walk on. And one of my favorites, whenever anyone's asking me like, what would be the best thing that kind of like has a lawn look? but without being a lawn. And my favorite answer, of course, you know what it's gonna be, it's gonna be frog fruit. Ugh, oh, it's so cute, it is so cute. If you don't know frog fruit, Phyla nymphadora, native to the entirety of the South of the United States. This is also known as fog fruit, which I think is its official name, but that is cute. Turkey tangle, um, matchstick plant, I think was the name that it came with when I bought it from the store. But most people like in the native community, we call it frog fruit because that's the really cute name. And this is a great ground cover that you can walk on because this, I don't know if you can see the stone path. You guys remember this earlier this year when we put in the wildflower garden? There is 
a little stone path here and the frog fruit has completely taken over it. So it is getting stepped on every single day by Ben and I as we try to get to these vegetable beds. So if that gives you some hope, it likes full sun, it deals with its drought tolerant. And what it does is it gets cute little tiny matchstick type flowers. Not these purple ones that you can see that are pretty big here. These That's beach verbena, but I'll, I'll take you in. Let's, you know, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. The, uh, no, not blossom, there you go. There you go, look at that. That's cute, right? So it brings in smaller pollinators like small bees, small wasps, small butterflies, like teeny tiny little ones like that. But what's really cool is it's a host plant. So adorable. This host plant is um, white peacock, Fayon Crescent, common buckeye. Now I have not seen Fayon Crescents or common buckeyes in my garden, um, but it is host to it. We have been getting white peacocks, I'm really excited and they've been over here laying eggs so I'm super excited because you know I'm all about the butterflies here butterfly gardening in Florida is like a must do so this one is like ee, I'm so excited I'm gonna have to eventually clear it off the stones but the idea is as you can see all this was one plant I planted two one died but the second one it slowly crept and that's what's cool about it is it creeps kind of along and spreads and it even spreads um under the mulch a little bit too so when there's something I've done with another type of ground cover, which we'll talk about in a second, that kind of helps me establish them. But what I had to do is pull back the mulch a little bit because it, what it'll do is it'll reroute along its nodes. It's supposed to be really easy to propagate, which I'm planning on trying to do some more in the future as we really get into like replacing grass. But what I found was is that when I planted in the winter, it kind of slow, slow through the spring and then summer, bam, it went crazy. So this one I love, I would highly recommend it. I have seen people who have it like actual lawns. They just, it, it will get that green mat look. You only need to mow it like once or twice a year. That's not bad, right? Once a season, six to inches to a foot tall is kind of its native like height. I mean, I feel like if you are looking for like the green blanket look, this is, this is, this is it. This is it. And I feel like it's dense enough that it's pretty good, like how we use typical lawn grass at keeping other like weeds out, right? The plants we don't want there. So you're not gonna have to like deal with fussing with it a lot. You kind of get established. But what I do think you're gonna need to do probably more often than once every season slash once every six months is you're probably gonna need to do edging because it's gonna, it will, this is like, you can see how far back the sidewalk is <laughs> right there. So you are gonna wanna edge it regularly, unless you, you're you're cool with this. But I know a lot of people were looking for that more neat and tidy look, but I think this is a great one. You're not gonna fertilize it. You're not gonna add pesticides. So overall for our ecosystem, this is like a big win plant. So consider frog fruit. Another ground cover that you can walk on, I actually walk on it all the time in videos. If you don't notice it, it's cause it's down there. <laughs> and that's, that's gonna be sunshine mimosa. So sunshine mimosa, super cute. So this one is native to the entirety of the Gulf Coast region and it goes up into like a little bit to like Georgia, Arkansas area of the Southeast of the United States. Um, sunshine, let's see, this is Mimosa strigulosa. So this is known as Sunshine Mimosa, the powder puff plant. It's just cute. Some people call it the Lorax plant because like, look at it. Does it not look like the little cutesy trees? They're so cute. The blooms are usually like there for a day or two. Whoop and then they fade. You can kind of see this one back here is a little faded. You can see it's like a paler pink, um, but they're really cute. Also, it kind of does the whole like runner thing. So this was one or two plants that were planted way over there and they have been creeping and creeping below my mulch. And I've been letting them do that because again, I don't want to be dumping so much mulch every year. And if I'm going to dump a lot of mulch, I want to do it for expanding things, not for just like sustaining some of these areas the same exact way though I will need to put mulch down again because of my tomatoes but that's like not not the point of this video <laughs> but this one like it can this is a ground cover that you can walk on also it likes full sun I would say frog fruit and sunshine mimosa are pretty similar in that they're drought tolerant they don't need the fertilizer they they can work really well as um that first plant you're going to do after you have grass because they can deal with that kind of soil that typical lawn soil though they can deal with the more acidic sandy soil because you know florida that's what we have full sun they can take a little bit of shade 
um, but they're not going to want any deep shade. That's not going to be a good plant for deep shade areas. Mm -mm. So don't do that one. Now here's the thing, sunshine mimosa, I think also like a six inch to a foot tall. I don't even think it's a foot tall, six inches to nine inches tall. Very cute. What's also fun about it is it's also known as like um, a tickle me plant, sensitive to touch. So like when the wind's blowing, I don't know if you can see any of this, but like if you touch these, they fold. Or if you just gently touch, they'll fold in. And that's one of the ways that they basically deal with the fact that um, hurricanes, <laughs> basically, that's it, hurricanes. That's how they survive hurricanes. But the problem with that is, is that really does allow for weeds to get in. So I have a neighbor who has this for her front yard strip like here, and you do see some like grassy type weeds that have gotten in and are like coming up and through. So this one, while you wouldn't need to mow it like ever, you would need to edge it because it does do this creeping thing where it kind of just meanders around, but you will have to deal with weeding from time to time. Are you gonna be weeding every weekend? No, like this is still way better than mowing your lawn, but like you will need to weed, especially in the beginning. My neighbor, she's had hers for a few years now and I don't, I think it's like basically slowly building a mat. And so I think that's keeping stuff out more, but definitely in the beginning, this, because I had mulch down, it was better, but there are still areas that like, I gotta go back through and pull weeds. What is good about this is that if you are having like a plant that has small seeds and could be suppressed by a light layer of mulch. I have basically taken mulch and done a very light layer on top of it, like a one half inch, one inch type layer. And this will come back up and through it. And that can keep down the seeds. So it just kind of makes it a little bit easier if you're trying to deal with like a very weedy situation. So sunshine, sunshine mimosa, I definitely feel like this is one that you should consider as a lawn alternative. But one of the things I've been thinking about when I'm thinking about expanding Sunshine Mimosa is I've been thinking about, is that the only type of ground cover I'm gonna use? Because since it does have that weedy side, especially in the beginning when we're gonna establish into some areas, like maybe it's that and frog fruit, or maybe it's another plant like twin flower. Now at this point, I'd love to show you twin flower. I had twin flower here, but it got too shady um, because this tree grew like a lot and it basically died bad so we can imagine twin flower for a moment but this is actually twin flower right here it is still growing in these semi-shade shade areas it's just not as happy but i have seen people over on like the florida native gardening communities and stuff like who have done um, lawn replacements with twin flower it can take it's another ground cover that you can walk on um, it's native throughout florida i don't know if it's native anywhere else outside of florida but it's a good one. It is a host plant to the common buckeye. So that's exciting. Who doesn't love a butterfly? And oh, they get cute little flowers on them. So it's like a really cute one. I don't know that it's gonna make as good of a mat as like a frog fruit because I have not experienced it. So what my thought process has been is in the future, and I don't know what areas, Ben and I are kind of going back on kind of the long-term plan of what we're doing, is like, if we do kind of like a native wildflower garden, if we did like a path, path right there, to kind of get in and out, then would we do a mix of like a twin flower, frog fruit, I don't think sunshine mimosa, but probably frog fruit and twin flower because they give you just kind of that nice mat. And then I could get one of those like mechanical push mowers and just psh, once a month, maybe once every couple months, I don't know. And then I'm gonna just push it and then we're gonna be good. Now, if you're thinking about an area that maybe doesn't need to be walked on very often, but sometimes another thing to think about is dune sunflower now this is not how tall it gets this is because it's going up and over a bush and it will go up and over things um but you can see this section right here where it has cascaded down very pretty pollinators love this thing and you get these cute flowers I mean, look at the flowers look at those flowers just for you just for today now this one could be a ground cover my issue with you wanting to use this as a ground cover like i've seen um like joseph um he did, did a strip like kind of between a sidewalk and the street this was great for it but one of the challenges with this is it's got like some pretty decent vines i feel like people are going to trip in this <laughs> so if you have any of these and have some more experience please let me know but this one i was thinking like no i wouldn't want the kids running through it because i feel like they're just going to trip all day long this one's native throughout eastern, the east coast of Florida. Um, you will find some in like Pinellas County. I've seen it on some of the beach areas uh, over by the Skyway, 
over by Skyway Bridge, I've seen some of it, but it's a really good one if you're looking for a ground cover alternative that maybe wouldn't be quote unquote looking like a lawn, but like, you know, we people use like what, Asiatic jasmine and a couple other plants as ground covers. So do this instead, it's way prettier, right? I mean, look at this. It'd be a ground cover, not necessarily a lawn, like running and kids playing and all that kind of shenanigans would be beach verbena. It's this purple one. It's mixed in with the frog fruit and they are looking really cute. But you can see it's quite a bit taller. It's about mm, six, nine inches right now. Maybe up to a foot. There's some right there. So maybe up to a foot tall. It doesn't get very big. It's got that. Right? I mean, so we like that. So it's really pretty. Um, and you can see frog fruit mixed in right here. So it's doing a really good job of matting out and also covering my walkway. <laughs> So if you're looking kind of for a low lawn alternative, that's gonna be more of like a ground cover area, I would definitely recommend this. This is really pretty. I have grown this and I've tried a bunch of these like Sunshine Mimosa, I've tried Frog Fruit and I've tried this in some heavier semi-shade areas. I will tell you, they don't do well. Mm -mm. They would like six, eight hours of sun. So I would be pushing them into the six to eight hours of sun kind of region and not the, um, yeah, not really good for a deep shade at all, or even like not deep shade, not a heavy partial shade, not even I would say a mid partial shade. No, they just are not very happy. They can take some shade throughout the day, but they don't want, they, they, they like this. They kind of like big and open spaces. <laughs> so I would think about that one. That's like a fun one if you don't want like to walk in the area. And that's the cool thing about native plants is that they're really not meant to be mowed regularly, but they would like a mowing at least once a year. And here's why. Florida is a state that burns. That sounds really like dramatic. <laughs> it burns here. No, so right, we're the number one state for lightning strikes. Um, the number one reason we have a state of an emergency is because of wildfires. And most of our plants were designed to deal with a burn cycle. So our systems are really based on this concept. So having a way to mow once a year wouldn't be a bad thing because even these kind of ground covers were designed to deal with the fact they have like massive deep root systems. Now you may be asking, but what about the shade? What do I do if I want a ground cover I can walk on, low maintenance kind of plant? Well, that'd be creeping sage. Everybody all day creeping sage. That's, that's what you want for shady areas. I don't have any. But if I had some, this is where I'd plant it. I'll show you an example in a minute. My neighbor has it and they've had it for years. They have a giant, um, I think it's a yellow poncienna and that shades that section of the neighborhood really, really, really well. Um, and, and the creeping sage looks good. So there you go. <laughs> have too much shade and here we go. Here's some creeping sage. And while it doesn't get walked on a lot, it is on the edge of the street. So it is getting pretty good traffic from dogs on the regular. And you can see, even though it's getting peed on and pooped on by all our canine friends, it maintains a pretty good look. I don't know if you can see all the bees that are flitting and floating around here. And you can see here some of the creeping sage is getting full sun at the moment though, with all the large trees around. It won't be for very long. But you can see it's creating a pretty good mat. They don't mow this, they just edge it from time to time. And that's it. Now you may be wondering, why not clover? Everyone's really into clover right now. I've seen a ton of TikTok videos about clover as a lawn alternative. And for other locations, that may be great. I honestly don't know whether that's like ecologically a good thing or a bad thing. Um, but for Florida, the reality is those are just more exotic plants. And we know exotic plants mean more work or more inputs like fertilizers and pesticides for us. So from an ecosystem standpoint, like probably not the best, but there are two native types of clover. One I know nothing about. The other type, I think I have it in my yard. And here's what I'll tell you about it. <laughs> it's, could it do a nice little mat? Sure. Could you mow it once in a while? Probably, but it flings its seeds. So when you touch it, cause I have it in my vegetable garden, it's like, pew, 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 which is amazing. So if you're looking at something that like is a ground cover you can walk on, you've got dogs, high likelihood that they're gonna get seeds in their eyes because those things just go and explode everywhere. So will it work as a ground cover? Maybe, 
But if you want to get like tackled with seeds constantly, it's not fun. Every time I deal with it in my vegetable garden, feel free to peruse my vegetable garden videos. Not a fan, not a fan of it. Yes, you can walk on it, but it's annoying as all get out. So for us, really the plan has been in the next couple of years or the next year or two, like all the grass in the front yard is gonna be gone. So definitely expanding some more milkweed wildflower garden areas, probably some more native plants right here. I don't think I'll be doing any more fruiting trees up front or any other fruiting trees up front. Really, we're talking about a much bigger expansion in the back. And as we go into that expansion, we're talking about how are we just gonna phase out all the grass because I'm not mowing that. And I think our yard's getting to the point where it's a bit, right? A lot of lawn maintenance companies really are based on being able to very quickly mow your lawn, edge your lawn and done. And our yard's becoming much more complicated. And so I don't think it's realistic for them to maintain that also from like a cost perspective, like why are we gonna keep paying for it? We're paying the same amount for our yard, but we're gonna, it's like getting smaller and smaller area. They don't do the front yard except for the strip and like these couple areas back here. They don't do anything with the side yards except for hedging one hedge on the side and then they do the backyard so we're kind of getting to the point where it's like do we just kind of just go all in you may be considering like so how did you get rid of the grass that you already got rid of lots of mulch like a lot of mulch just lots and lots and lots of mulch <laughs> that's really it um and this is the thing i get a question on a lot is that do you need to put cardboard down before you put mulch down to suppress out grass grass no you don't need, if you're gonna do three, six inches on top of your grass, as long as you just push the grass so it lays down, you don't need to put any other barriers. Grass is not gonna come up through three to six inches of mulch. And we typically, um, I think we did six to nine inches when we first did ours. So maybe three inches would be kind of eh, but six to nine inches, that grass is not gonna come up. On the edges it will. So you'll need to kind of pull and weed back from those areas, but the rest of it, don't put the effort into cardboard. Cardboard becomes more of an, a thing you wanna deal with with certain types of plants. And usually it's because they've got established root systems or tuber root systems. And this is where a word of warning is before you just like dive in into all these like ground covers or lawn alternatives is that some of these, like I know of people who've said that they put in sunshine mimosa and then later they wanna take it out. And it's a beast because it has, once it's established, it has very deep root systems because drought tolerant plants, well, guess what? They're drought tolerant because they can get way, 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 way down into the ground and get all that water and suck it back up. So just be prepared that like, when you're gonna go do this, once you get it established, same thing with frog fruit, they, they can be hard to get back out. So I would just be decently sure this is what you want because you may not wanna get it out later. But if it's between doing, dealing with this all the time and dealing with a native, I probably prefer the native, but it takes effort. It does take time. This is not just like a snap, snap of your finger and it just happens. So over the next couple of years in the backyard, we're really, the first phase of what we're gonna be doing is not replacing the grass with a, <laughs> with a lawn alternative, as in another ground cover. We're gonna really be focused more on replacing the grass with vegetable beds and food, like food orchard, food forest type plants and wildflower gardens. We're gonna be doing kind of the first step, which is like, let's get the big things in place and then we'll come back around and then deal with all that. But it'll be a lot less once we've eaten up the space with vegetable beds, some more fruiting trees, which everyone right now has been like, Jacqueline, get the mango. And I'm like, I know, but Ben and I cannot agree on what type of mango to get. So we'll figure that one out. But yeah, a lot of this space will become vegetable garden, more fruit trees. And then we're talking about how are we gonna integrate a lot more native plants and wildflowers back here. And not just like an easy, like weekend task. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So really for us, the first phase, when we talk about doing a lawn alternative, it's gonna be about putting in a vegetable garden, putting in some more fruiting trees, putting in some wildflower garden areas. And then once we got kind of the major gardens put in place, then we will come in and start wiping out this grass with some things. And the main things I'm probably gonna be focusing on in this area because we get so much sun will be frog fruit and twin flower will be the two main ones that I'm gonna be doing. I am super psyched for us to expand and get rid of more and more of this grass and have more actual functional usable space, whether it's food for us or food for all of our wildlife. 
Yes, but if you're needing some inspiration as you continue on the journey of lawn alternatives and you wanna think about dumping a ton of mulch, use this video to inspire you. <laughs> And if you want to learn more about some of our wildflowers, go ahead and check out this video. You'll see some of the ones that are I talked about today. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye!